I have never really tried talking about this, but I thought I would do this for myself. I know I said I was going to take a break, but um, I am job searching right now, and um, I figured I would do this um, in the time that I'm not searching for a job in the evenings and just talk about this. I saw a lot of vloggers do these like trauma videos where they just have these story times about all these traumas and I found them very healing in a way, strangely. So yeah, I don't know how this video is gonna turn out, but I think it's gonna be a very long video. So let's just go straight with it. So I think the first thing I wanna mention is that I have three siblings and some of these traumas involve them in my story and some of these things happen to them too um but the crazy thing is they don't seem to you know still have like nightmares about these memories so that's one thing i should probably first mention and if you also have these issues, I just want to quickly give a trigger warning. So here we go. So I think my earliest memory of having a trauma was um, I, w I was a little kid and I can't remember how old I was, but I lived with my grandparents for a while. Um, roughly before I was five and I was the second child and my mom and my sister had, you know, gone to, um, New Zealand first and back then me and my sister were very young, um, so my sister really didn't know what I look like or remembered me much until I like went and like joined them later on um so I was pretty much with my grandparents all the time and so but there was one time where I just remember my mom came back some just, I don't know for what reason, maybe for um, business trip or something, I don't know. But one day she came home and I recognized her, but I didn't know anything about this unfamiliar woman. And I, you know, I had a babysitter who looked after me, baby, basically like a nurse. Um, and, um, she would always sing me to sleep, you know, make my meals, do everything with me. So when I first saw my mom that day, I, um, I kind of just, you know, said that you're not my mom. And I said, uh, I think that's what I said. Yeah. And, and I said that the babysitter was my, my, was my mom. And she was really mad about that. And she was like yelling at me, saying that she had bought all the groceries. And, you know, she was asking me like, where do you think all the groceries came from? you know, ma making, like, all the food that you have every day, you know, and I don't remember if she, like, did anything else, but I just remember that this babysitter was quickly fired, um, and she denied that this was the reason why that she was fired, but 
even then my grandmother who was still around my grandma was like she knew that my mom had a problem with her uh, and that I think was the earliest memory um, and then I you know went over to New Zealand and I was really small then and you know I still had that same issue you know calling my mom my mom mm, and I can't remember what for what reason or what happened that day but I think a similar thing happened where and then I just refused to call her my mom and I just remember that she refused to like let me get close to her she wouldn't pick me up she just every time I crawled over she would push me away and she did that for an entire day and she did that until I started crying and begging her um, and telling her why I was wrong and then after that, I think, um, uh, let me think for one second. Um, oh yeah. And then there was this incident where, um, this was like, after a couple of years, um, when my brother was coming along and he, and my mom was pregnant and she had big belly and I was like pretty, still pretty young and I was really bad at math. I was a slow learner um, and I was really bad at my homework and I remember that day I was sitting by her, like, feet, and I just couldn't get that math question right, and she was really mad at me, so she, uh, she later explained to me that she didn't want to bend over, so she kicked me really hard in my mouth, like, boom, and I just remember crying and running to the bathroom and uh, my entire mouth inside was like full of blood and I spat a lot a lot of it out on into the sink um, and after you know all the blood was gone uh, my lips were like very swollen um, like a pig you know just very swollen and yeah that happened and um and then i think around 2007 i was moved over here to, to canada and I was in elementary school and I came here around second grade and um, like it was like when I got here it was around Mother's Day and I think the first project I ever made was a Mother's Day card and let's just say um, I spent a lot of time on that card and um, because we did as a class, you know, working on that stamp, um, you know, the design and the color and we worked really hard on writing in cursive um, and I gave it to her and the next day I found it in the crash can. And she never said anything about it, but I found it. And yeah, that was pretty much 
one of my first memories of, you know, kind of traumatic experiences. Um, and then, uh, I think that was one of, like, the first few, um, I can't remember, like, um, all of them in correct order, so that's why I'm looking through my notes right now, um, but, yeah, um, Uh, let's see. Okay, so I think the next one I want to talk about is, this is during, like, I think elementary school or in high school. Uh, and this was before I moved, like, to two different schools, so, um, uh, the, so she, my mom, you know, like, she had asked me to go to the hair salon to get my hair cut. And she had already asked me a couple times, but I just, you know, didn't find the time or just didn't try to, like, find one right away. And I remember that day I was doing my homework and on the, on the like, computer and... You know, I just didn't really bother with her and just wasn't listening. And she just like took a pair, took out a pair of scissors. Um, and she didn't tell me she, what she was doing with that scissors. And then she just started cutting my hair. And I think halfway I realized that she was cutting my hair. Um, and I, like, freaked out, so I stood up, and, you know, because I was, I stood up, she couldn't continue cutting my hair, and I ran to the bathroom, so, like, half of my hair was cut, half of my hair wasn't cut, and it was just, like, super uneven, but that wasn't even the problem, it was just the fact that she was just, like, cutting my hair, that was really scary, um, and I remember I was just, I just burst into tears. Um, and, uh, and I told her, you know, like, I really didn't like it. And she's like, oh, it's not my fault. You got up halfway and didn't let me finish the haircut. And then I just didn't want to look at my hair. But then, and then I try to, like, have some alone time in the bathroom and then she didn't allow that though so she like literally like pushed the door open and she she like grabbed my arm and then she dragged me out and she pulled me in front of a mirror in the bathroom and made me like she basically grabbed my head and made me look in the mirror and she's like i can't remember what she was saying but yeah she just wanted me to look at it and I was always like scared of being made fun of like in school for my hair um so you know like that was a big deal for me and yeah so and then that kind of makes me remember that when I was like in New Zealand before I moved um, I was also in primary school so basically same as elementary school and my dad was really mad at me because I hated eating eggs um, and so one day I just refused to eat it for breakfast and he got really pissed like he just didn't he was he was just like whooping my ass um and it really hurt and I was crying um 
it, you know, um, he basically wouldn't let me go to school for that. And he said that I wasn't allowed to go to school unless I eat my eggs. Um, yeah. I think those are earliest uh, memories of trauma. And after that, I think um, mm, let me just see from my notes right real quick. Mm. So these are some memories when about my brothers. So we were in elementary and my brother he was really young and one time he played with the piano just played with it for fun and my dad saw that so he took it seriously and like paid lessons for him and jason was super young back then um and um and it was just um after one class he just didn't want to like take more classes anymore and my dad was furious with that um and there was one day like my dad just like i don't know why he was so mad but he was like he beat my brother up pretty bad like he whooped his ass like real hard and i don't know if that's the only thing he did but i just remember that my brother's butt cheek was like bleeding and he was just like sprawled on the like stairs not mo like in pain basically and crying and um and my brother other brother he eats really slowly right and so my dad would have this thing where he hates when people eat slow so he would like hit him like this like boom and like my obviously my brother was scared right so he would start crying and then you could see all the food in his mouth and um, and so, yeah, that was pretty bad, I guess. Um, and, you know, uh, there was one summer we went back to China and my dad was drunk. But, I mean, there's so many things he did when he was drunk. And, and that was, I think, one of the first time I was actually scared of him. Um, so, he was drunk and he came back home. And we were staying at his house. And, um, and I was in the shower, but I heard noise and it came out 
and I just saw him like chasing my brother and he was all drunk but so he wasn't like walking very properly he just kept like slumping you know and he's a tall man you know and my brother was like tiny and I immediately like stood between them and you know my dad tried to get around me but I didn't let him pass me because I was kind of scared that he would like you know in trying to hug my brother and then you know collapse on top of my brother and crush him so I stood between them and my dad was drunk and um I don't really know what he was thinking but um, in that moment he just he grabbed my neck and then he just kept like walking towards the wall and then he pinned me down onto the couch and he just started choking me and closing his like fists around my neck my throat and I was really scared I couldn't really breathe at the moment well I could breathe but I was choking basically and I was like this so my arms were behind me and that's how he held me down it was like this you know and so my only reaction was to scratch him real hard hoping he would let go so I like scratched him real hard on his arm and he did let go and then I ran ran and like away from him um like crying and then I saw my mom so I w ran towards her and then when everything quieted down though and he was a little bit more sober um my mom was like reprimanding me for it and she was like how could you scratch your dad like that and I had told her that what had happened and I said you know dad just almost killed me and she's like, oh, don't be so dramatic. And um, so, yeah, that was the first time, you know, I got, you know, hurt because I tried to protect my brother. And it's not a really nice memory because your dad pretty much just tried to kill you. Um and my mom defended him saying he was drunk and that i shouldn't have scratched him so so hard and so yeah that was yeah and then the following memories are like more and like the recent, not recent, but like more closer to like in the same neighborhood I'm staying in right now in the previous houses. So, um, my brother, he got into a fight with, um, my sister. I can't remember for what reason. And, um, my mom was really mad at my brother, so she, like, took out a, like, broomstick, and my brother was, like, already, like, crying and throwing a tantrum, so he was, like, ready to charge at her, and my mom was, like, grabbing the broomstick, and I, you know, I, I try to, like, hold my brother down and just... You know, and it, and while I'm doing that, I'm telling her, like, hey, like, stop, drop that. And she told me to, like, mind my own business uh, and to go back to my room. So I did, but, you know, like, 
I had to get her attention some somehow to make her stop. So I like threw like these fake flowers onto the ground to make some noise. Um, and I did come out of my room at one point and I saw that um, my brother just ran out the front door because he was so mad. And he was pretty small then. And he was like wearing shorts too. And it was like during the winter when this happened. And my mom just wouldn't let him back inside. Like, she just refused. Like, he, literally, like, my brother was, like, outside for a good, like, I don't know, like, 20 minutes or, like, 15 minutes. And, like, when I, you know, told her, hey... I'm gonna start recording you and she was like do it if you dare and then you know after I started causing a commotion about it she she like told me that I was mentally ill and you know um she brought out her laptop and then she brought it over and she uh she was like making me look at it and she's like, oh, you're totally mentally ill. And um, yeah. And uh, there were many incidences like that. And where because of my brother didn't want to do something or he just wasn't listening. Like one time my dad punched a hole in the wall because he knew about how like if you leave bruises on your kid and they show up to school, you can get in trouble for that. Uh, so he like punched the wall instead and there was a hole in it um and jason was crying and you know like i was in the other room i couldn't really see what was going on but my mom said that he didn't punch jason he punched the wall and um we were just all told, I think at one point, that we're not supposed to, like, bring this up at school. I think one time, one of my brothers had a bruise on their head, and we were all told not to talk about it at school. Uh, and, um, yeah, and to talk about some other things... Um, um, my mom has this weird habit of, like, checking if you are asleep or not, and if you're faking it or you're not asleep by the time she's checking on you, then she can get really mad. And it can be a very creepy method, so she would basically, like, s sneak into your room. And, um, she wouldn't make any noise, but she would be, like, standing there. And she would just be looking very closely at you. Uh, and then she would be, like, looking if your eye eyeballs are moving. Or if you're breathing in a pattern that clearly isn't sleeping. Um, and if she catches you, she'll like turn on the lights and sit down, cross her arms, and then basically reprimand you for it. It was always really scary. Um, most of the time I wasn't awake when she was standing there though. 
and only when she left open of my eyes. But one time she didn't make any noise and I didn't know she was there. And I opened my eyes and she was just standing there. Just a dark figure. And she was just staring at me. And that really creeped me out. Um, and she has a habit of throwing away things I'm of things like that I'm attached to that are owed. So as a kid I got attached to like really random things. I got attached to blankets, um and journals. And I remember I had like one of those one of those two things and I wouldn't stop crying so she gave me back my blanket uh, and for the journal like obviously as a kid like you would always like misplace your things and be blaming everyone and be like oh where did you take my things you know and then find it later in your own room right that's usually how it is but that day was different like it for, it was the one time where like after I wouldn't stop crying, like, she st at first she was, like, saying over and over again, like, she didn't take it. And then when I wouldn't stop crying, though, like, after 15 minutes, tops, maybe just 10 minutes, she came back and she handed me, like, the journal that I was asking for. And we lived in a huge house back then. And there was no way she could have found that that fast if she didn't hide it herself. And yeah, so she did that kind of thing. And she just, she still does that. Like, I had a few shirts that I couldn't find for a long time. And then she wouldn't tell me about it. And then she kind of just threw them away. And then she would tell me, like, maybe two months later, like, oh, by the way, I threw out one of your shirts. Um, yeah. And I have, like, this stuffy right here. Stitch. It's from a very old Disney movie. And she used to come to my room all the time. And she would, like, ask me to, like, throw it away. And I don't get attached to things very easily. It has to be something that's very special to me. Like, um, so obviously that wasn't going to happen, right? And she would just be disgusted by the fact that I wouldn't like throw it away because she said it was so dirty and everything. And yeah, so I was just. There was a period of time where I kept carrying around this stuffy because I felt like she would throw it away if I wasn't home. Um, and this next part I'm going to talk about is a bit more serious. So um, I deal with depression and some mood disorder so um so what i want to talk about is um the thing with me and my mom the thing we used to always fight about the most was um her habit of changing my medicine cutting my medicine as in like she would take a tablet and then she would like take a knife and then cut it in half and she would not follow the prescription and sometimes she would like you know instead of two tablets maybe one and a half or Instead of two tablets, two and a half tablets, you know, 
and um, I would always argue with that with her because these medicine have very serious um, symptoms, um, and there was one time where she didn't listen to me, and uh, the the what do you call it? Uh, she cut back my medicine. And I couldn't sleep for an entire week. I, like, fell into severe insomnia. Like, my body just forgot how to sleep. And it took me an entire seven days before my sleep even returned. And I still had to go to school. Um, So that was really crazy because... My brain brain pretty much shut down. I was so tired, but I could not fall asleep. And, you know, um, there were many incidences like that where she would play around with my medication. And um, I would always have a huge problem with that. Um, And one time I had a few panic attacks. And, uh, I went, and she refused to take me to the ER myself, so I had to go there myself. She was like, oh, there's nothing wrong with you, like, you're still able to talk back at me, you're still able to argue with me, and so, you know, I had to, like, grab, like, my care card, my, you know, everything I needed in the middle of having a panic attack. And when I was, like, show, sh- when I showed up at the ER, like, reception, I was, like, literally shaking. Like, I couldn't hold my hand still. Um, and, uh, yeah, and... I, you know, the nurse asked me, like, did you want to see your parent? Because she apparently an hour later showed up and, like, demanded to see me. And my siblings came, too, for some reason. And um, I had said no, but she barged right in. And uh, she was really mad at me. She was like, Oh, why did you tell them that you didn't want to to see me, you know? And these kind of things just kept happening. So eventually, even psychiatrists had a problem with how she did things. But eventually, I told them what happened. I used to not tell them that she, you know, would, you know, fool around with my medication. And I started telling them, and then they were like, hey, you can't do that. And my mom would get really pissed, so she would basically um, stop sending me to these appointments. And one by one, like, like, I would stop showing up, and... We went from psychiatrist to psychiatrist, and they all seemed to have a problem with how she did things. Um, And I think my last psychiatrist, before the psychiatrist, um, she had a problem with it too. And so my mom basically said, okay, you're not going there anymore. And so at that point, I didn't have a psychiatrist, and but I still needed my medication. So she got a prescription without an actual referral or prescription. And she just lied to the pharmacy saying that, you know, um, 
that my psychiatrist was busy on on break or something and this was just a refill so it wasn't really a big deal you know and so she somehow like got a hold of that medication um and during my panic attack i think i was taking this medication and it just did really didn't work and it just made things a lot worse and there was still some medication in that bottle when i was discharged and my mom had you know um before i left the hospital she had given me some and so i was under the impression that she was continuing to give me that medication and there was like another medication with a very similar name to it um and so i just said like you can't keep doing that and then but because when we got home she she didn't keep doing that anymore so she said that that never happened and she said that i was delusional i made that all up in my head um and there was one time i don't remember why my dad got so mad at me but he was like trying to break down my door and i was in the bathroom and you know i was kind of freaking out and in that split moment i just i called the police and also the ambulance but like the 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 am- ambulance and the police who were staying with me paramedic basically they were like asking me a question like does your dad have a gun on him and i said at that time i was a kind of like hysterical so you know i told them yeah but like not on him but i knew there was a gun in the house somewhere but he never really used it so i just said yeah he does and then so the police show up right and i was trying to open the door for them but my dad just like started yelling at me but he wasn't like rushing up to me he was like if you open that door i'm going to kill you and then he screamed my name twice and i felt really scared um and eventually i did open the door though and the police came in and they were asking about okay where's the gun and there was no gun obviously because he never even took it out um and then they were talking to my sister and my mom first because they were talking to me separately and my sister and my mom were on the same page trying to stay on the same page or same story so they they were like oh don't mind my sister like sh- she's being delusional right now she made it all up like my dad is the sweetest person he would never bring out a gun you know none of this ever happened and the police kind of just believed her and um so then they just left and i don't remember if they left but i think i stopped very quickly at the hospital um yeah and one time i went to the police station there were many times i tried to run run away from home because i would get in a huge fight with my parents uh and one time i tried to talk about these things with the police officer and this was like right when i was like in may right after high school so before i dropped out of like university and i like like talk about all the stuff and you know and i thought he, he was going to like have a serious chat with my mom and i was kind of scared to go home you know like what if my mom like got really pissed at me or something 
And when I got home, I was surprised because no one seemed to like be like angry at me, you know? They were like, oh, hi, Lucy, you know? And I was like, kind of like, what's going on here? And then my, then my brother told me that he was like, oh, the police showed up, but nothing really happened. They're like, oh, teen teenagers, are, teenagers are like that. You know, they're just really emotional, like have a good day. And that was it. They didn't really take me seriously when I told them about all these things. And uh, so I think I would just talk about two more things. And I think that's pretty much it. Um, so, um, uh, my mom had an issue with, um, people telling her how to do things. So, there was one, I think we were in Universal Studios waiting for this, like, amusement park ride, and we were in a very long lineup. And my mom, I think, she bumped into this kid. And she was with her mom. And my mom told me, like, hey. But she didn't really have a very good English at the time. And she was like, and the ladies, I mean, the girl's mom asked her to apologize to her and her child. And my mom told me that, that she refuses to do that. And she basically asked me to, you know tell her off and tell her to like, you know, and I said, you know, it's not a really big deal, you could just apologize, like it was an honest, honest, maybe it was just an honest mistake, and I didn't even have time to react because my mom, the next thing I know, she just slapped me like boom across my face, and it was just, I was in total shock. And one time I was like at a hotel during a vacation and I was trying to put my shoe on. And, but it wasn't like directly in the doorway. And my mom, I don't know what she was doing, but she closed the door on my hand and it crushed my thumb. And it's completely healed now, but this nail here was completely, it fell off. And it was like bleeding, like hardcore. And she didn't bring me to a clinic to clean it up or have it wrapped up or anything. She didn't bring me to the hospital or anything. You know, I was just like bleeding like. And I was just staring at the nail that kept falling more and more, you know? And, you know, it was just, my dad was like screaming at me. He was like, oh, I'm going to leave you behind. We have a tour bus to catch. And, yeah, it was pretty scary. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, and uh, I th I don't think there's anything more than that to talk about, but uh... oh yeah, there was one more thing. I got into like this I hurt my leg, okay, so I have this knee issue where the the kneecap isn't very stable, so it keeps shifting a lot, and it happens a lot, so I can't do certain, like, activities, like, um, for example, football, soccer, uh, or, um, or like field hockey, anything like that. And so it one time, I think this was like maybe a year ago, and I was trying to kick the soccer ball, but something happened and I just collapsed onto the ground in pain. And 
I could not move my leg. And, um, but obviously, because it was a knee problem, I could still move my foot. So, like, I was screaming in pain and crying. And, you know, um, and it took a long time before my brother came back with crutches from he he purchased from the store and like any small movement would make it like shift and every time it shift it would hurt so badly like i couldn't even like move it it was like my leg it wasn't even my leg it was like so we back it back into the room and sleeping was the worst because um at that point it had been three days i spent at home and on the third day i just couldn't do anymore because i couldn't even lie down right because every time i tried doing that it would hurt so bad it was like snapping your bones it made a huge sound you know and i just cried in pain and you know but no matter how much i cried my mom was like stop overreacting you're not even bleeding you know like i had friends who went skiing who actually have you know worse injuries than you have and they're actually bleeding and they're not crying like you like a crybaby and so she was like basically saying she didn't believe me that it hurt that badly um and uh on the third day i just couldn't do it anymore and you know i asked her like can you call the ambulance for me and she wouldn't do it and she's like if you're gonna do it this was like when the covid first started too um, if you are going to call the ambulance, do it yourself. She literally threw like the landline phone onto the pillow. And she's like, do it yourself then. And um, she was really unhappy when like the paramedics showed up. Anyway, only after I got an x ray done. Did and found out that there was like this like this is the glove right and um my kneecap had was like sitting like this so it wasn't like completely outside of like the kneecap it wasn't like boom right but it was like that and there was like this huge gap here and it wasn't sitting here. So that's why it hurt so much. And we were even talking about maybe perhaps surgery. Um, but because I was so young and so the doctor suggested that I seek, you know, physiotherapy instead. Because there's so much, so many things that could go wrong in a surgery. And you know, I'm still so young, and he was like, he doesn't want me to, like, you know, lose the ability to walk with his leg, you know, so I was, like, bedridden for, like, I can't remember how many months, but, yeah, I was bedridden for a very long time, and I, I have, um, I have a video, actually, um, on my YouTube page talking about that, so yeah, um, I think that's the last thing I'm going to talk about for now. There's a lot, I mean, there's definitely a lot more things that happened since then, but I think these are like rather old memories that, you know, I can talk about because it happened so long ago. And some of these other things that I, I didn't mention is because it happened more recently and I'm still trying to figure them out and I'm not very good at explaining them. So, yeah. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed 
not enjoyed, but, like, um, I don't know, like, got something from this, I guess. And, um, yeah, like, I never thought I would actually take the time to actually talk about all of it. Um, I've never done this before, you know, but I decided to try it, um, so there it is.